everyone and welcome to our HealthBridge Clinical product demo. My name is Yvonne and I head up the client experience teams at HealthBridge. Um, it gives me great pleasure to host um, our product demo with the head of product, um, Jared Crane. Um, he's got some really cool and exciting um, things to show you about our HealthBridge Clinical uh, EMR. And I hope that at the end of the demo, you're as equally excited about our product as we are. Jared, let's hear from you. Cool. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, I think, you know, with the, the digital revolution in, inside practices, there's, there's a lot of options and, and confusion around what approach to take when, when embracing an EMR. So I'm really just going to speak to three main areas. Um, really, they, they're almost guideposts when deciding what to what approach to take, what products to choose, what solutions to look at, um, just to help you on the on the journey to digital practice. The first one is really a, about a seamless integration with the admin side. Um, when people think of EMRs, they think of clinical information, clinical records, all of that is correct and relevant, but often what is neglected is how is it going to work inside your practice, specifically with your, your admin staff, the reception, um, so that's that's going to be the first the first thing I'm going to discuss. Secondly, will be just you know it needs to be simple. There needs to be a simple way to create the digital record. It needs to be a simple way to to receive the information to understand it, the flow. So I'll go through that next, and then finally I'll look at what should be the journey to go paperless. There isn't a, a one size fits all. If you hear you know solutions saying sign up now and go completely paperless tomorrow, you know it should set off some alarm bells. There are different approaches to it and, and ways to transition to it rather than just flipping a switch. Um, Yvonne, right. if I speak too quickly or, or get carried away, please please uh, rein me in. I, I believe for this product demo, we're going to try and keep it quite uh, concise. So I'll, I'll, I'll rein you in, otherwise I know you talk for hours. Cool, thanks. All right. Um, yeah, let's, this, will, this will be a, a quicker one. Um, tell me when you can see my screen. I can see it. Okay, great. All right, so, so as mentioned, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Um, as mentioned, you know, a clinical, there's a lot of good rich clinical products out there in the market. But it's, it's super important to understand how it'll work with your, your front desk and your admin. So I'm going to just go through a, a few examples just to show you some practical applications and what to look out for. Um, the first one is your day and, and the waiting room management. A good solution will be able to, to show you what's in store for today. So this is our homepage and immediately you can see that uh, you have an appointment for uh, Mrs. Mode um, at 9.38. You can see Brian Smithers is coming in next and Lawrence Jones afterwards. So it's a good integration with, with your front, um, front desk to know uh, what your, what's in store for your day and you can also switch to a week view. Um, equally important is a view of your waiting room. Again, this is integrated with the PMA, so your admin person takes care of this, but you as a doctor can understand that, you know, Brian Jones uh, is in progress with the doctor um, as of five minutes ago. Lawrence Jones has arrived, he's been checked in. He's very early, his appointment's in 42 minutes, um, whereas Edna's appointment was 10 minutes ago. So you can immediately know that uh, you were 10 minutes behind for, for your appointment with Edna. Also, you can see that uh, you got a, an appointment with Brian Smithers, which is a telehealth consultation. It's got the little uh, telehealth icon. You'd be able to click on this. Uh, you'd, it'll indicate when Brian is on, on the call and waiting for you, and you'd be able to open the, the telehealth consultation and complete the flow, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit. We can also see there's a note for Lawrence Jones. This is from your, your front staff. It says uh, sore throat, suspects COVID. Um, so again, it's just a good way for you as the doctor to know, you know, it's a, you know, what, who's waiting, how long they've been waiting, why they're waiting there, uh, just to make your life easier. Uh, and if you and I think, Jared, sorry to interrupt you, but that um, seamless experience um, between the, the PMA and um, HealthBridge Clinical is, is key. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm not going to go through the PMA side today, but the, your admin staff will have all the bells and whistles that you'd expect plus more. And as soon as they do anything in the space, it's, it's seamlessly integrated. This is your clinical view, but it also shows you your, your day and what's happening. Um, if you have a nurse practitioner, they'll be able to 
to look at different providers uh, to see which patients are waiting for which provider and they're able to, to pick them up here, do any pre-consultation tests, that type of thing. Okay, um, another important consideration uh, in terms of integration with the admin, I'm just going to open a patient record now. I will speak through the record, but the first thing I just want to point out is that I can already see there's a patient liable amount. This is a demo system, so um, Brian Smithers owes 5,900 Rand on their, um, on their uh, account. I can click on this. It'll tell me whether they have funds available um, and the status of their account. So again, if that is important to you, and if it's you know you may want to to have that information, it again pulls through from the admin side. You're also able to in a consultation. Um, I will quickly just go to the very last step, and I will I will get to this uh, later on. But you can send this your your claim to the admin person with instructions. So you'll see here there's a note for admin and you can say uh, please collect uh, before patient leaves or um, discuss outstanding money, whatever it might be and then the admin person will be able to pick this up. And while it's important to have all this rich clinical information, to be able to you know, work with your, your front staff and your admin is, is really key and important. And there's something to look out for when you making a decision on what product to, to take on. Mm -hmm. Great, um, I'm gonna move over to, to the next side of it, uh, which uh, we discuss is the, the simple way to generate clinical information, populate it and be able to pull it up uh, and reference it. Um, so we, we know who's waiting in, in the waiting room, we know who's in progress. I'm just gonna click on one of these to open a patient record. We'll, we'll go to Lawrence Jones and you'll see it's opened the file at the top. Lawrence Jones has a picture of me and I can see all his clinical information. It's, this really is the equivalent of the yellow file. We worked with doctors to, to know what's important, what we should show here. We are not clinicians, we are, are more techies. So we, we designed this with, with doctors. Um, immediately I can see that Lawrence Jones, I can see a picture of him, I can see he enjoys hiking, he's, in, you know, he's married to Florence, I can see he is an ex-smoker, heavy alcoholic um, or heavy alcohol lifestyle and then stress is 7 out of 10. I can also see other family members, I can see surgical history and all these conditions and medication. If I scroll a little bit down, I can also see um, the history of, of all the consults and, and interactions I've had with them. I can see we had a telephone consultation on the 26th of November for upper respiratory infection. I can see we did some, uh, some notes. There was a COVID test in August last year. He was negative. And it's just a good way for me to get a snapshot of you know, the, the clinical record and clinical file. I can quickly scan through this. We we're here for cold and flu with headaches in, in July. I can see the, the medical certificate. I can see what I prescribed. And it's just a, a quick snapshot of, of the patient. And all of this information, it really needs to be simple and quick to capture. This was stressed um, with what we called our design doctors. Uh, you know, they said, you know, if I want to add surgical information, I need to be able to click it once, click surgery, see the common ones, click on it, add it in. Or if I need a search or extra notes, I can type them in. It needs to be really quick and seamless. And it's, that is the philosophy we try to do with all the clinical information. Um, if they, whether it's lifestyle information, conditions, just click on it once. You can say whether they're married, unmarried, smoking, whatever the relevant factors are for you. And then you can save it and go back to the file. The, you'll, if I click here, you'll see all the, the contents of the patient file. If, if they have allergies, you can just click on allergies. You can, you can tick it, you can say, um, if it's moderate or severe, really the philosophy is about making it as quick and easy for you as a practitioner um, to capture the, the relevant patient information. You'll see down the right hand side, uh, we call this the, the patient executive summary. It really has everything relevant and will remain there while you're doing a consultation. So you'll be able to see what plan they're on, they're on Discovery Saver, you can see their allergies, you can see their conditions. You can see what medications are on. So they're asthmatic, they're on Ventolin um, and their lifestyle info. So while doing the consult, when you move away from this patient overview, you still have this key information while doing the consult. I mean, Jared, you mentioned it um, just a few minutes ago, the investment that um, you and the team made in working with, with doctors. 
And I remember um, sitting in some of those sessions with that executive summary and often doctors would tell us that that's what they've got on either their, their cover page or something that you can quickly um, access, um, you know, without causing any interruption between yourself and, and the patient. Yeah, exactly. And we were pushed constantly, uh, make it quicker, make it easier to add these things. It's got to be simple. We don't want to spend time typing everything in. Give us the, the most frequent surgeries, conditions, um, just speed is essential um, mm -hmm. when having that consultation experience, but and at the same time having that, you know, the right information at the right time for that consultation. There's, I'm just going to open, I'm going to search for a patient quickly at the top. Um, one thing to note is it's, it is contextual. So uh, for instance, uh, Edna Jane is eight months old. And as a result, I can see uh, the growth charts um, for Edna Jane. If I choose a, an uh, adult, Jane McRitchie, um, there will be a, so an adult female, there's a Ghani section, and you'll have the Ghani information in that executive summary, whereas you wouldn't have it for, for one of your male patients. Okay, so, so really it's, it's about being able to, to quickly contextualize, um, you know, everything you need about the patient, and then you can go into the, into the consultation itself. I will now start a consultation, and this is really the last thing, I, I, the last section I want to discuss, and we'll spend a bit more time here, is the flow of the, of the consultation. There, there are, the flow is broken into four main areas, symptoms, examination, diagnose and prescribe, and plan. Symptoms, we've got, uh, it really is flexible depending on how you want to use it as a practitioner. If you're more comfortable with typing and you can, you know, so a patient complains of sore throat, uh, tired, whatever it might be, and you can type and it's really easy for you to type and the area gets bigger as you do it. Another way, um, if you have a, um, a tablet with a, a good stylus like the S Pen or the Apple Pencil, you can open the stylus notes and and actually write your notes instead, uh, which is really simple and easy to do. The other way, and what we worked again with the doctors is, you know, what are the typical complaints or the typical uh, visit types for patients coming in? Um, and then we've got these, and these are really templates. They cover, you know, the 80, 90% of the type of questions you want to ask that it makes it easy just to click yes or no, or not applicable, whatever it might be. So let's choose COVID since it's so uh, topical. It'll then pull up the template and it'll ask you questions that are optional for you to answer. So fever, yes, cough, yes, sore throat, no, or yes. Shortness of breath, I'll say yes. I may want to add a note around this. Um, started this, this morning. And as we're going through the consultation, and if I click here on the side for the summary, you'll see this is populating all the clinical notes and information for that consultation. And it really is simple. You know, it click, they're nauseous, they don't have chest pain, loss of smell, yes, loss of taste, yes. And we can go down. Very, very easy. So that's the mm -hmm. symptom step. Um, I'm gonna now go to examination. The next step, the first um, chunk of uh, examination is standard typical metrics that you, you may wanna capture. Um, if you have a nurse, the nurse can do it beforehand and they'll pull through here. You can also have a, a note from the nurse if there's anything they specifically want you to look at. Um, and it's very easy, we'll say temperature 38, blood pressure 120 over 80, and it'll carry on through. And you can really choose what you wanna um, use or not use. Um, Edna, because we're on a lady, it'll have a gynae section. So we'll say oral contraceptive pill. Um, and there's just questions that you would expect there. As we go down, it gets back to the COVID template that we selected in the first step. And it'll help you just uh, step through uh, the relevant questions that you may want to ask. Um, we can open again the executive summary. So should there be anything I want to know if there are on any medications or any conditions currently? And we can again just click yes, no, abnormal, normal. Um, and depending what the question is, you can then elaborate further. So if, if we say um, under respiratory, equal air entry is a no, it'll then ask you if it's decreased localized or generalized. If you say localized, it'll then elaborate again. Um, so it's, it's really just the, the essential questions for 
uh, COVID in this example, but if you had to choose hypertension, the questions would be for hypertension or if you had to choose fever, the, it would adjust. Again, you can choose to just write uh, on observation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of this gets put into the, the consultation summary. The next step would be um, the diagnose and prescribe. This, this will actually generate the, the claim information as well and send it through either directly to the medical aid. So when the patient walks out, you'll know what the patient is owing and the front desk can collect, or you can send it to the um, to reception who might vet it and then send it through. Now, so again, that's just an example to my first point, the, the integration with the, your admin side is, is key. The diagnose and prescribe has a template. So if there's something you see frequently, let's say upper respiratory template that has um, a few consumables, uh, specific medicines you may want to prescribe and diagnose, a specific diagnosis code, one click can then add it to your entire consultation. So I'll just add it like that. Um, some of this is, is, is bogus data. I'm, I'm just going to remove some of it. So you can choose the um, a template. Um, we also um, pre Jared, hmm. sorry, sorry to, to interrupt, Go but the template, how did that get there? Ah, awesome question. So if you, as the practitioner, find yourself doing something over and over again, um, let's let's do as an, as an example, we can say a diagnosis of um, acute uh, bronchitis um, and you often give, I'll quickly say Augmentin, um, I'll click on that and I'll, I'll go through these steps slower, but at the end of this process, so I'll say one tablet two times a day for five days, add it to prescription, I can then save this in the review step as a template and call it, uh, you know, whatever it might be, bronchitis adult template. And then it'll appear here under templates for future reference. So it's, 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 it's just a, a way to make things, again, it's that make it easier, make it quicker, let me save stuff that I can reuse. You'll also see that we've automatically put the, the PPE um, procedure code and equipment as, as part of the, the consultation. This, um, <laughs> we see so many practices not billing for it. Um, so we've, it's an option to include it or not, especially during COVID times, um, really easy to do. So you, you could have a template um, or you can have favorites underneath every section. So you can have your favorite diagnoses, uh, you can have your favorite medicines, uh, you can have your favorite procedures, and it's, it's just really easy for you to just click and add it to the, to the consultation. I'm going to go to a patient with chronic con um, that's already on medicine uh, or is already taking medicine. When I, when I go to this step for this patient, and I click on medicine, I can specifically see this patient's meds. So it's easy for you as the doctor to say, okay, I see on Combivent, I'm going to prescribe this again. I'll click on it. It'll give me um, from, you know, machine learning, it'll tell us what the typical dosages are for that patient. So a, a lot of time was spent on the screen. So you can see it's, you know, the patient weight, um, the price of the medicine, should that be relevant? And again, it's about the speed. I can say one inhale three times a day for 30 days, allow generics, um, and I can say, uh, three repeats. It might be an additional instruction that I want to add or not to, and then simply just click add to prescription. And you can see here it's added it. I'm going to add a, a diagnosis quick. I, I've got existing conditions for this patient. Um, I will choose mixed asthma because they're here for their asthma follow up potentially. Um, and now I can, because I've added Combivent to the to the claim or, or the prescription, I can open the, the script. I can see it there. I can see the RC10 code. I can see all the information that I put in previously. One dose, three times a day. It's got a digital signature. So if it's schedule four or below, I can simply email this to the patient or email it to the to the pharmacy itself. So, so I've got the, your letterhead at the top here. Um, very, very simple to do. And it's, it's the same with the, the sick note or referral letter, which I'll show you. Um, you can generate it, edit it, send it off, email it, print it, whatever it might be. Uh, I'll choose. Uh, yeah, I also remember um, in other um, product demos we've done um, some doctors asking, but 
Sometimes I want to add information here that I actually want to put into my executive summary. I think that might be worth showing. Oh, definitely. Uh, it's a very good point. Um, let's now uh, add another medicine. Um, I'll choose, um, let's go with Ventolin or yeah, Ventolin Accuhaler as an example. Um, I click on this. I can quickly add the dosage. I'm going to say AM, PM, 30 days, add to prescription. Very simple. Uh, this one's already on there, there with patient record. One sec, let's add another one. Um, we'll do the third one. Let's just do Ventis as an example. Um, add to prescription. If this is a chronic medicine, there's a little pin here, which is pin to patient summary. So now I'm going to pin Ventis as an example, and I'm going to pin, to the, uh, pin it against the asthma. And the next time I open Brian Jones's account, so I click on it or his patient record rather, I can see here under asthma, it's both CombiVent and Ventis. So no need to have to start searching for medicines to generate this um, rich clinical information. You can do this in flow and it's the same with a, a chronic condition. So I'll, I'll jump back to um, Edna. She doesn't have a chronic condition. So let's say I'm on the step of diagnosing and I will say R10, they have hypertension, I can select this and I will now pin it to that patient record. And you can see here already on the right hand side, they now have a condition of, of uh, hypertension. Very cool. The, so you, I'll, I'll quickly skip through to the review step. Um, we got everything that, uh, let's actually go back to, no, it's fine, we can continue with Edna. We've got the, the claim information, the diagnosis, we've got the amounts, we've got the price, you have the prescription. At this point, you can email it or print it. Um, and now we're gonna carry on to, and there's the save as a template, by the way, that we discussed earlier. So if there's something you typically do, you can just save as a template, put in the template name and hit save and it's done. So we'll, we'll just call this one bronchitis or, or bronch and we'll hit save and it adds it to the to your favorite templates for for quick use. If I go to plan, this is really uh, the outcomes. I can, I can again make plan notes or, or use my stylus. Uh, there's some quick outcomes I can select. So um, I'm gonna say they referred um, and I did a path request. You can do a sick note. So if I choose the sick note option, I'll, I can select whether I do or don't want an IC10 code for how long they're gonna be booked off for. And I'll preview this. And you can see it has the sick note information. You may want to edit this. Um, please allow X, Y, Z or may return earlier if feeling better. Whatever it might be, you can add it to the, the sick note and, and send it off. Email or print it. You can also do an SMS to the patient. So we can say to Edna, Edna, in, I want to see you for a follow-up visit in three weeks time and I'm going to do some path tests, so please come fasted. Now Edna will receive this message a few days before her appointment, um, reminding her to come in and to, to arrive fasted. This is particularly useful for practices where there aren't, uh, where it's more walk-in and, and less booking of appointments. Um, you can just uh, cue the message and the patient will get it and, and remind them to, to come in. Also have referral letters. Um, I will quickly generate one. It'll automatically put in all the relevant information, patient name, their you know, this current visit, what they're diagnosed with, all the notes that we, we typed out together, um, all the, the COVID template where we ticked yes, no, all of that gets added to it, uh, what procedures were done, any clinical metrics. And all of this is editable. Um, so you can say, please call me after you see the patient. So, whatever you might want the referring doctor to know. It's got your signature on it. We can save this and again, you can email it or print it. Super easy. Uh, just a, a few nuances, you know, you might, you might be busy with Edna, um, but a patient phones in, you can quickly uh, uh, search for the patient. Uh, there's always a Smith in a demo system, so you can open the patient. You can talk to Brian, you can make a quick note, you can say spoke about path results, 
and you can add that to their record. Or maybe Brian is actually phoning about path results. You can click your pathology tab here. Any new path results for the day will appear here. Um, or you can open them from the record. So I can, oh, well, let's go to the path center here. Um, so we have an integration with Empath, Lancet, Pathcare. Um, and there's another one that's eluding me. Um, for Mark is on the way. For Mark, thank you. For Mark is on the way. We, we're busy in pilot with For Mark. So as soon as the pathology results are available, they'll be integrated into not only here, but also on the, the patient's record as well. So I can just search for, uh, let's just go to my patients. So here's some demo ones. We can open Jonathan Mode's microbiology um, and it'll show you. So this is Pathcare, it'll show you the results. You can notify the patient or send them a message about it. Or I can go to this patient's timeline. Um, I will go to Jonathan and then I can always phone Jonathan um, give him his results uh, or whatever, um, or phone or, or what not. Okay, sorry, I jumped around a little bit there. Um, we, we pretty much finished the consultation. We we're on the plan step. I can click finish at the top here. I can choose, as mentioned earlier, for it to go straight to the medical aid or to admin. Um, and I can also leave a note for the admin person as shown earlier. There's a, a few other bells and whistles I didn't even cover. Um, such as general screening and screening reminders. So on, on Brian Smith's account here, you can see this little notification bell on the top right. If I click on that, he has three screenings due. Um, some are way overdue, 2017, 2014, 2015, and an alert that I put as the doctor, something I wanna speak about Brian next time he comes in. So speak about stress and work. So just to show you how, how that looks and feels, I'll, I'll I'll go to, um, let's go to Brian Jones. He doesn't have any alerts. I can click on here. I can add an alert and say, um, next visit, ask how Joe uh, or Joe is doing. And it's just an, a, a nice way to end a reminder for you as the doctor. Um, next time he comes in, it'll, it'll remind you of, of the to-do and you can you can select and clear it. Even, even quicker than sticking a sticky note on the file. Yes, actually on, on the sticky notes, let me, let me quickly show you that. Um, we do have that concept, you'll see here a little task item. So if, you know, there might be an alert for a patient, but you might have general tasks to do. Uh, I can click on tasks and I see I need to phone John. I can say, okay, I've actually phoned John and it'll appear under my completed tasks. Or you might have another task to do. So I could say contact uh, Sarah uh, or contact Dr. Smith and then in the description I need to speak about patient Crane Jared. I better do this today. I'm going to set a reminder that it should remind me today and now it's on my, my to-do list here. And if, if need be, I didn't get around to it, I'm going to quickly go edit this and change the date to tomorrow. Maybe it's not that urgent. And at any point, I can quickly toggle back, see who the patients are waiting. I can see if there's any new pathology results. I can look at my tasks, or I can go back to the patient that I'm busy working with at the time. It's important, the, the one thing doctors stressed, is important not to be, you know, cons, you know, forced into a specific workflow. You know, let me switch between patients. Let me check on files. Let me check the pathology. Let me quickly check how my day is going uh, with the calendar. I can already see that we've been speaking a long time because uh, Lawrence Jones is, is, or Brian Smith is 14 minutes ago now. Um, on 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 that, we mentioned telehealth earlier. If I click here you'll see that instead of start consultation, it's to start a telehealth consult. What happens, the, the workflow here is the, the patient will get an SMS to remind them to connect. They will click on a link, it'll be a secure link. They can do it from their, their, their cell phone or an iPad. It'll open a little uh, a window on their phone, just like Skype or WhatsApp calling. Um, and you as the doctor can start the consultation and it'll pop up uh, the view of the patient um, there, so you'll be able to see them, you'll be able to speak to them, but at the same time, you'll be able to continue your consultation with them. So you can say to Brian, what brings you? And you might say he has anxiety. You can click on anxiety and it'll bring you up that template 
and you can complete the flow. You can minimize this if you need more space, if you have a smaller screen, or you can make it larger, you can open it in a, a new tab. Um, it's very, very easy to do. A few benefits of using telehealth here as opposed to something like WhatsApp. Um, one, the patient is reminded to connect. Very important, you don't wanna be you know, having to phone and ask why they haven't connected. Uh, you'll be able to see here, this will change color when the patient does connect. So you'll know, oh, Brian's on, you can connect to them. It doesn't share your personal number if that's important to you, unlike WhatsApp. So it's, and as, again, it's about the ease that you can open it up. You can do the telehealth consultation while you go through the, the workflow we discussed already. And if there's any alerts, you can quickly click on this and check what they were. Okay, I know that was quick fire and I started speeding up. <laughs> um, there's the, there really is a lot to get through, um, but, but it's about the three things. Make sure that it works really easy, seamlessly with your, your admin side. You don't wanna have hiccups between you know, the doctor and reception area. Clinical information has to be super quick and easy to capture. You know, you don't want to be having to find stuff and look for things. You need to be able to quickly open the file, see what medicine they're on, any surgical information, add a quick note, whatever it might be. Um, see their previous uh, history. And then lastly, the, the flow itself needs to be simple. Um, this is configurable. You can even turn off symptoms in examination, start straight at the diagnosis step and write your notes on the side here. And so, you know, Hi, oh, sorry, um, temp, et cetera, et cetera. Then the digital journey, we, let's just quickly touch on that. It's, it's great to be able to have the option to go completely paperless. It's important, you want that option there. You don't necessarily need to start on day one. In fact, it could be the wrong approach depending on your practice size and setup and, and how many records. So there's a few tips and tricks that, that we found that work really well that I wanna share. The first one is being able to have the history or the, the previous printed notes um, on your timeline. So there is, um, if I scroll down here on Brian Jones, I can see the, the previous yellow file. And these are just um, examples. I can open it. I can view what was in the file. And it's just really easy for me, should I need to see the historical notes. What's important is getting it there. What we suggest is, is not trying the, the bulk approach of trying to scan all your files, but having a system where as a, a patient comes in, um, admin will pull their paper file, they'll, they'll, they'll give it to you when you go see the patient and you as the doctor can put a, a sticker or a mark whether they should, you know, should scan all of it, should scan the front page or can archive it that it's not actually required. What we've seen work quite well is just like three stickers, um, green, which is scan all of it, you know, yellow, which is scan the front page, whatever it might be. The patient will walk out again, give the file back to the, the reception or the doctor will give it back and the, the admin can then action it. They can scan it in on their side and for you as the doctor, it'll appear here, which is really and important. Jared, when you say scanning on, on, on their side, it's using a um, application that works alongside um, health. Exactly. It's not like you have to get your own no, uh, no. Yeah. scanning application. Or... Yeah, exactly. You can use our, our you can, they can either use a, a separate application that we've uh, got specifically for that, um, or if you're comfortable, we can even give uh, restricted access yeah, to the clinical side. But really it's about you know, just having a seamless way to get this information here, um, rather than trying to go digital and paperless on the, on the first day. That's really important. Um, in terms of other documents and scanning, you as a doctor can, you can just drop a, a PDF or an image into here. You can click on the photo um, icon here and, and take a photo. You can attach a, a file that you might have got emailed and saved to your computer. So I'll, I'll say patient record here. Um, description, let's call it uh, radio for radiology. Um, I'll select the type radiology and I will add these files to the record. So now it's a, you can see it's been scanned here. It's on the timeline. I can always filter to only see my documents. So there's a radiology scan of the knee and then this other scan we just uploaded here. 
and there might be a note you want to add to it. So I'll, I'll say um, contacted patient, confirmed all well, save it there. So really just super easy for you as the, as the doctor to capture this information. There it is, the note, the scan, super simple. Great. Cool, I think trying to keep to the promise of keeping it short, I think that'll, that'll do it justice. There are other bells and whistles that we could speak to. Um, there's health ID integration, so you can quickly open health ID and, and link directly to Brian Jones's account there. Um, there's, there's some specific information for, for um, children that you can capture, different types of metrics, things like that. Um, but I'm not going to do it justice uh, unless we sit here for the next hour or two. I mean, uh, just, just on that, um, I mean, thanks, Jared. Uh, two, two things come to mind. One is that I always enjoy doing these product demos with you because um, there's always something new. And I think that's testament to the way um, yourself and, and the team are really every, so every two weeks, something new is coming up um, just at the speed of innovation and the way you, you know, the team works with, with doctors. So always cool to see new things. And um, the other thing from us is we, we'd love the opportunity for our, uh, one of our business consultants to spend um, a little bit more intimate time coming to visit, uh, visit you, um, either happy to do a, um, a telephonic or virtual um, meeting with you or come and visit at the practice and then really take you through um, Healthbridge um, Clinical, uh, maybe at a slower pace to, to share it and really maybe spend some time um, looking at what's important for you and having a, a more customized um, demo. So yeah, we, we, you know, you can reach out to us via our website um, if you'd like one of our consultants to, to come through and meet with you. I yeah, think absolutely. That's from, from our side. Great. Thanks, Thanks Yvonne. For joining us. Thanks. Bye. Cheers.